Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Be Here again, and uh, today I'm covering a pretty large video. Uh, it's gonna have a bunch of topics in it. Actually, I'll just scroll it over. Um, so as you can see, I have a bunch of stuff I want to kind of go over. Um, so it might seem like a bunch of videos uh, kind of combined into one. That's what it might be. So you're probably gonna see a bunch of different cuts and stuff. But overall, it's gonna be to kind of just cover all of these and in different parts of this. You know, I'll be cover like during this. You know, I'll be covering volume. Yes, but that's not the only part of the video. I'll be covering volume. You know, I'll be covering it here, here. You know, in different parts. So in each part of these, you know, it's kind of mixed. So, but these are the main topics I want to cover. So. Uh, if this is this one of the things you're looking for uh, forward to looking towards uh, in the announcements of the chat. Awesome. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you weren't aware of the announcement, awesome. <laughs> uh, but either way, please leave a like and comment on this video. Uh, I'm going to try and work hard on this video, but uh, these are all the main topics I want to cover. A lot of people keep bugging me for, and not really bugging me, I'm really glad to help, uh, but we do daily streams, so just make sure to head on to those if you can um, for the first few hours each day of the market. Uh, but a big thing that people have been asking me about is the swing trading I've been doing. Um, you know, so I want to cover a bunch of points. It's not just one thing, you know, to teach. It really is like a bunch of points that I got to put all together. So that's what this is. Uh, but I'm going to first go through some Weeble trades. Um, we did this account in my private group, which my private group is just an invite only group. So uh, please don't come ask about it. It really is just invite only just to help build the group up slowly over time. Um, more and more and more in depth. Uh, but it's just an invite-only group where we work on pattern trading, swing trading, you know, literally everything you can think of. Uh, but that's just our main focus is the swing trading aspect because people have, you know, jobs, all that good stuff. So this kind of trading is super helpful to those people. Um, but what I'm going to start off with is um, the Weeble trades, you know, what I went through. Uh, I'm going to go through some volume. And these aren't in order. I'll probably split this off and change it again, uh, <laughs> knowing me. But... Um, I'm going to definitely cover all of this though, so if this is something you're interested in, awesome. Uh, but I'm going to just go ahead and get into it. Alright, so I decided to start off with just the basics of patterns. Um, kind of made more sense to kind of go over the patterns first before I start going through the trades I actually took. Um, so a, a, just four of the patterns I'm going to be going over, and they're kind of two of, a lot of them are really similar in a lot of ways, but um, a lot of the patterns I'm going to be going over are uh, the stars, you have the evening and morning star. You have your bullish and bearish harami. You have a dark cloud cover and a piercing line. And then you have the bullish and bearish engulfing, which are just really stronger versions of the dark cloud cover and piercing line. Uh, so I will go over all the differences and, and all that stuff right now. Um, so, But let's start with uh, stars and haramis, I guess, since I said those first. Um, so a big thing when looking for patterns, it is not just... Um, let's just go to a blank. So um, a big thing with patterns is not just getting in and out or randomly finding a bearish or bullish engulfing and then just saying, all right, it's time to get in. Um, it's all about positional too. You know, you don't just want to find them randomly out in the open and just get in. Okay. You want to, it really is positional. So, so let's say we have a very strong uptrend, right? And I've done this uh, example with my chat a ton of times. So let's say, here, that's actually a very awesome drawing. Let's do that better. So let's say we have a very nice, timid, very just nice uptrend. Okay. Just a nice random uptrend, right? Let's say this is the stock price moving in and out of it, right? We're all pretty aware of how these go, um, whether it's on the weekly or the daily. Um, doesn't matter. But the weekly and the daily are going to be what you want to focus on first, and then the four hours where you break it down. But, of course, during this, I'm going to go through that. So let's just start off with the basics. <clears throat> so here, on positional trading, um, where do you think you would want to find uh, bullish and bearish patterns? Where would you want to find bullish patterns? Let's start with that. Okay, you wouldn't want to find them just randomly at the top of a trend waiting to break out more. You want to get them in a spot where they have a higher probability. So you want to get them when they're down closer to the bottom of the channel. Um, of course, the best of them are going to be on a downtrend. Uh, when you find them kind of retesting down, up and down, up and down. The best place to find a bullish pattern is going to be on those downs. When they come back down, you're going to end up getting your... Your bullish haramis, your uh, your uh, morning star, sorry, um, your bullish engulfings, your piercing lines, and what that's going to do is you're not just finding a good pattern now. Now you're finding a good pattern in a good position. So now you're adding a lot more confidence behind your your trade there. So um, th then later on in this video, I'll cover how you can form a trade plan around that. But I'm just kind of going over the basics now of what they are. So a big point there is. Uh, positional though so just make sure you have that written down you don't just want to find a bullish engulfing um, and then get calls no you want to look for a bullish engulfing at the bottom of a trend 
um, in a better spot. You know, not something that's kind of looking like it's like way out here out in the open, you know, way, way up here. That's where you're going to want to find your bearish patterns, your your uh, your evening star, your uh, dark cloud cover, your bearish engulfing, all that good stuff. Uh, your bearish Harami, sorry, I almost forgot that one. But you're going to want to find those at the tops of those trends, okay? Kind of at the top right there. As price is moving up, you're going to want to find a bearish engulfing, a dark cloud cover. Kind of like you're seeing here. You're seeing like a weakness in buyers pick up, um, but you're seeing sellers pick up a little bit. No, the volume isn't the greatest, but you are seeing them try to take this over. Um, so now let's get into the basics of each pattern and what they are. All right, so I'm going to start off with the stars. So um, with the evening star, uh, here's a good example here on Trade Desk today. So all I did was I went through the scanner just to find one real quick, just so we get a good example. Um, but a big thing that I find very useful, kind of relating to that, because I'm not going to touch up on this too crazily, um, is don't look through the scanner too much. It is kind of cool to go look if you can't find anything else. But I would say the biggest portion of help, like something that will help you very big is making your own watch list. As you can see, I have a ton uh, just based off different sectors and stuff, but it's very good to understand that you should go through each of those watch lists and through the daily and weekly time frames, you know, look at the last few patterns, look at the trend it's in, uh, just kind of give it a quick eye, and that's how you should really go and look for your pattern trades. But um, let's let's just break down the star, though. So the evening star, as you can see, uh, and just how we're relating to our positional trading, you know, you, we're not just wanting to find this at the bottom of a trend. You know, we have a good, nice uptrend going up here. Um, but the big part here is, here is the evening star, just so you know. Uh, the stronger the evening star, so it's okay if this candle's green. Um, it'd be stronger if it was red, uh, but that's a gravestone doji, so that's okay. Um, and I really like that we have a bearish engulfing kind of next to it. So it really is a kind of a pattern combination. So a morning star really is a green candle. I mean, sorry, an evening star. This is the bearish version, evening star. Um, so, and then you have a gap up or a sort of correlation there, or sorry, consolidation there. And then you have your kind of very long wick to the top side. Uh, and this, of course, at the top of a trend. Uh, and then it'd be stronger, of course, if you had the gap down right there to take it down lower. Um, but in this case, as you can see, you have a bearish engulfing. So sometimes it is okay to still have that and it still be an evening star. So that is an example of an evening, evening star in which you would always mark the outside of the pattern. So you'd definitely mark. That's definitely three things you're always going to want to mark is the outside of the pattern and then about 50% of that pattern. So uh, I'm not going to 100% get it, but. Um, you can always put it about in the middle, um, but a really easy way is grabbing your Fibonacci retracement, going to the outside of the pattern, kind of grabbing that, and then marking that 50%. Um, this is super useful. You'll see as I do it on engulfings, uh, dark cloud covers, piercing lines. Um, those are my favorite to do it on. Stars and Haramis, I don't do it on as much, but it is still something that I like to go check just to, just to add on to it. And, of course, I'll show you uh, some other methods later on on how you can add uh, really a bunch of other useful levels around this too. So it, it'll really all just kind of uh, combine at the end of this uh, video and you'll see um, this really is deadly. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, but that was the evening star. So what do you think a morning star is? A morning star would be the opposite. A morning star would be when you have the downtrend. Whoops. And then, like I was saying, as you see here, price pushed up, down, up, down, up. You're on your uptrend. So you want to at least find it in a good position. So it's on the up. You have a good high probability of it going down. Your target's going to be at least 574, that's for sure. Uh, but the bigger break, of course, I'll show you, of course, uh, later on how you can add more extra levels. But for now, let's talk about the uh, Morning Star. So that was the bearish version. Bullish version is going to be the same thing, uh, but opposite. So just kind of flip that. So you're going to have uh, a downtrend. Let's say you have a, a red candle there. And then you have a green candle pop up. Then you have a doji and it just kind of ends up like that. Let's just say it's opposite like that. It doesn't always have to be like that. Sometimes you'll end up having it be like a box too. It'll be like a little hammer or a star. So um, very nice to always see that there. The stronger the gap up, uh, the stronger the gaps though, if you have the gaps in between these candles when they move, um, that's a lot stronger of a setup though. So always remember that if you have the gaps in between both. You see how you only have the gap in between this one but not this one? Uh, so it's not as strong. So it is still a bearish engulfing, still strong setup. Uh, but it'd be a little stronger if it had the gaps in between. So always want to look for that. And then the strength of it too is when you pass the outer of the pattern. So when this passes 574 and breaks this downtrend channel, technically, yes, it should go a lot lower. You should see a pretty big seller momentum pick up right there um, just based off that. But those are the stars. Uh, next, I'm going to get into the Haramis. All right, so here's the Haramis. So this is a bearish Harami, these last two candles here, just so we have that going before we keep going on. Um, and a big thing, too, to note is, again, the outside of the patterns. You're going to want to always mark the outside of the pattern. And then, of course, find the positional trading. As you can see, there's a very good, strong uptrend here. 
and then it gets a little more rapid bullish right here. So you start to see the bullish volume pick up right there. It's a little more higher than this average amount of volume that's about right here. You can see it's all about over my little cursor there. Uh, most of the volume is under my line right there, but as you can see, all that's a little rising above it. So there's definitely some big bullish momentum, and you can see just the aggressiveness off that uptrend line. Um, so what a better spot to find a bearish pattern, right? Um, so a, a Harami is a one, well, a bearish Harami, I guess I'll start with, is when you have a bullish candlestick, and the very next day you have a very tiny indecisive day in which is about four times smaller than the previous day. So you want this candle to be very tiny in comparison to the day before, bullish or bearish. So um, in this case, it would be bearish. In this case, it would be bullish. So just right there, you could see, uh, and of course you didn't see me mark the uh, uh, kind of uh, example on this because yes you do have a nice strong kind of downtrend right there but it's not really fair to say because you wouldn't have been 100% certain that that was just going to randomly pull up you know that's a very good risk reward because you did have a little bit of time and exhaustion there um, but as you can see you know look a little morning star got an evening star so just cool you could see all the patterns kind of combined together uh, but you could see it definitely slowed up as it pulled up there bullish harami ended up taking it back up so you guys you can see very very small and this one's very, very small. So tomorrow, uh, or I guess when you guys see this, it'll be today, um, you'll see that this most likely should be going down. If it goes up, then yeah, it's a fake out. I mean, that happens. That's the risk reward you're taking. Your stop loss is going to be the outside of the pattern. If you can, of course, if it starts higher, you just wait to see. And of course, later in the video, I'm going to show you guys what you can do going into the next day when you're trading these patterns. So um, a big thing with the Haramis, I just wanted to show a quick little uh, cut of them is what they look like. I wanted to show both of them and then explain that the, the smaller they are, the stronger they are. So if you get a very, very small one and it's like a wick kind of like that above it, it's a very, very strong pattern. This is actually one of the coolest looking Haramis I've seen in a while. So um, very nice to see, but you can see the indecision in the candle there. Uh, but awesome to see that. I uh, hope you guys enjoy seeing these uh, two Haramis here. I'm going to move on to the engulfings, dark cloud covers, and piercing lines. So these will all kind of be in one, um, but... Uh, yeah, let's keep moving. If you have any comments too, let me know below and uh, I'll be of course glad to answer them uh, as you find any questions or have anything you want to kind of go over again. But uh, I should kind of go over a lot of this pretty well. But uh, Haramis, definitely one of my favorites. They're not as strong as engulfings or dark cloud covers or piercing lines. Um, I kind of put them around stars level. You know, I think stars and Haramis are about the same to me. I th just based off how I've traded, um, I think that they're about the same strength when you see them, but dark cloud covers, piercing lines, and engulfings, those are definitely my favorites. So uh, let's get into those now. All right, so now I'm going to be going over the dark cloud cover, uh, the piercing lines, the engulfings, but I kind of want to start with the dark cloud cover and piercing line because it'll kind of lead into how you can see the difference in strength. So um, let's start off with just this here. So as you can see, nice strong uptrend. Um, these are definitely some of my favorite patterns, and the big reason is, is anytime you have an uptrend or a big green day and the next day starts up, it gets me excited because I know I can at least day trade it, and I'll show you exactly how in this video. So, um, of course, just like I showed you guys on the other patterns, mark the outside of the pattern, and then the 50%. So this is where the 50% control point comes into play. Say so dark cloud cover is a is a pattern in which has an uptrend, good green day, and then the very next day starts above it, so it gapped up above it, and it's probably rallied in the morning, making people think it's going to keep going, uh, and then it came back down. Came back down and tries to hold on to, hold on or below the 50% to make a dark cloud cover. As you can see, it was pretty much on the finish line there. So if it was a little lower, it would have been a little stronger. Uh, but I'd still be happy with how long that wick is on top. So that actually keep that would actually give me a lot of confidence to take that uh, take that trade to at least come back down to the trend line. Um, and what you can do there is mark that 50%, so you can always at least know what you're doing there. So um, how you can day trade those real quick, just before I break any further into those, is um, one, from your pre-market low to that 50% control point, you can take a trade. And then from that 50% control point to the previous day open is where you can take an open or low. So uh, the next bigger target would have been from here to the 661 if we were to base this on a trade plan. Um, but entry, of course, would have been end of day. You could see how it closed just on top of, but just barely below. So yes, it does matter when you get it uh, just correctly on it. But as you can see, it just finished perfectly past it. Um, but let's look at the daily again and as you can see the entire time what have I been looking at I've been looking at the daily time frame uh, some of the examples you'll see me go through it'll be weekly time frame uh, time frame related so it really is different in a lot of in a lot of that manner but uh, in that cool look you can see a bunch of patterns got your star you got kind of another star there you got like a little like 
wick hold there that almost starts a star and then it gaps up to make it a very strong gap up star so very nice to see and that's just on the weekly you know going off that kind of stuff there uh, looking for position you know you want to find it in a range at the bottom of the range for bullish at the top for bearish uh, but let's let's go back to the f cell chart and let's show you the uh, daily time frame and let's show you some engulfings now so check out these so which one of these would you have taken um seeing how far they are which one do you think is stronger a or b so you have this oh come on you have this very nice strong uptrend here and you have kind of a short term one here and you have an engulfing right there and engulfing is a day that starts uh, past and entirely gets past the previous day. So as you can see, like I covered in the other star patterns, um, completely engulfs that previous day. And that's why they call it the engulfing, completely engulfs. Uh, but here you have it here, completely engulfing that day as well, uh, and then leading back down to a downtrend. So what are patterns? You know, what do, what do people think patterns are? Patterns are really what send us back and forth in our trends. So every stock is in a, in a, in a has a primary trend. Uh, and within that primary trend, you have your secondary trends. Within those secondary trends, you're going to have your tertiary trends. Within your tertiary, and it goes on and on and on. Um, but what are, what is making us shift back and forth? It's the candle momentum. You know, you should be able to see long wicks on the top when things are slowing down. You should be able to see long wicks on the bottom when you think things are picking back up. Um, big bodies, your marabuzos, it's a very strong candles. Um, getting these combinations of candles give you the patterns to help you see future price action without really guessing. This isn't gambling. Again, this is being preemptive, um, planning it all out. So again, you'll keep seeing me break this down more and more. But um, yeah, so here's the uh, the question was that I was supposed to be asking is, um, is which out of these two do you think is stronger? You know, it's really easy to be capped in hindsight and say this one, you know, but uh, and the answer is that one just to let you know. But um the long the bigger the uptrend of course we find it up there you know yeah but what brought us down each time you know going on up there you know a very nice candle kind of slowed us down star slowed us down common resistance another star another star you know but as price keeps pushing up you're seeing the selling pressure uh, on each candle but right there that would have been the stronger one out of the two of these bearish engulfings uh, but let's get into what a piercing line is now uh, and actually i can do it on this chart i was going to cut it and move to another one but i can do it here so um, what do you see in this channel right here? We can just kind of use this channel as an example. You know, what did I say? You want to find bearish up here, bullish down here, right? So let's kind of look at it like that now. So what do we see here now? So nothing really there. Uh, you got a bearish engulfing star. What do you have on the bottom though? You know, you got a star there as well. What do you have here? A piercing line. So let's mark the open. Whoa. The open to close. Let's mark the 50%. And as you can see, see how it didn't close above? So it's not a piercing line, is a, is a fake out. It, th that would not be a high probability trade setup you would want to take. You would wait. You would wait for that to, to play out a little more and give you a little more information. Uh, so as you can see, that didn't play out. Um, but as you can see, piercing lines are just like dark cloud covers, just the opposite. Bullish engulfings are just a bearish engulfing, but the opposite. So really, as you can see, each pattern kind of has a counter opposite. Um, which is really useful with remembering things. So now every time you look at a dark cloud cover, you're like, oh, what's the bullish one? What's that one? Oh, it's the piercing line, blah, blah, blah. So whenever people hit me up, they're always like, it's the bullish dark cloud cover. I can't remember the name. It's okay if you don't remember the name, as long as you know what you're looking at and what you're analyzing. Um, but it would definitely help if you remember the name. Uh, so, but back into the talk though, um, what do you have down here? You know, down towards the bottom of your trend on the bottom of that channel. You have two more bullish engulfing. So as you can see, the buying pressure is picking up. You know, as it's, as you're seeing more of the patterns combine, um, and that's what we've been doing when we've been trading. We really have just been combining our patterns, uh, trading pattern to pattern, and that helps us hold long um, or be able to take uh, profits early. You know, so a lot of people are like, "Oh, I took profits too early." You know, who cares? You know, no one goes broke taking profits. Uh, if you're able to take profits and sit in cash, that's amazing. You know, not everyone is in the same seat as you. That's a good problem if you consider that a problem. So. Um, but I hope these breakdowns on the engulfings, the piercing lines, the dark cloud covers were helpful. Um, but a big thing when you guys are seeing me go through this, because I'm going to break them down more too as I as I go through the trades I took. But a big thing you guys need to mark down when uh, talking about this section is marking the outside of your pattern and always marking the previous day, uh, m the middle of this range and the previous day candles middle. Just so you have all of the control points within that range. And so you see this, the, the most important part of that range. So you can see how strong the pushes are. So if you get a day that just kind of opens up and your small gains, doesn't look like you're going to make a whole lot, you can just take profits. You don't have to hold super long. 
Um, if you get something that's more promising and you think you can hold it longer, awesome. It keeps holding control points, staircasing up, awesome. Uh, but let's get into the staircase method. All right, so one more topic we can cover before we get into the Weeble account uh, that we blew up really well uh, and all the pattern trades we took, all the swing trading analysis we took in between. Uh, before we get into all that, I want to cover the TA routine. You know, what other TA goes into breaking it down? So as you can see here, um, we have the Beyond chart on the weekly. Uh, you know, what is the TA routine? So I want to cover this because this is what helps me form a lot of my trade plans. It helps me break down when I start looking for patterns. And this is really what you can do um, to help reset your chart and get the same analysis. Um, you know, if you ever need to reset it because there's too many lines. But this is this, these are lines you can leave on here forever. That's how, that's how good this charting technique is. And it's super, super simple. So as you can see, I'm on the weekly. I'm just going to start with getting my range. Uh, so I'm going to use the price level tool. And I'm going to mark the outside of my range. So I'm going to mark my high and my low, just kind of some emerging candles. Uh, an emerging candle is a candle in which pushes up into a new area. I always start from the left, as you can see. Left to right. Never going from uh, right to left. Always go left to right like a book. So I have my main weekly emerging candles. I'm just marking the tops of my big green buyers on the left side, not worrying about anything. Now I'm moving to the right. Let's mark that one. I can mark that one that one so we have three more we just marked mark that one it lines up with two mark that one and it might be a little hectic you know looking at all this but um, as you get down to the smaller time frames you'll see it's actually super helpful uh, so let's get down to the daily now I just kind of look at just the yearly see if we uh, the daily and see if we miss anything and there are a few that we miss that we can kind of mark we missed that emerging candle we got a gap range here we can mark uh, we got all those but as you can see they line up pretty well it gets most of everything you need Sometimes you have to just touch up on a few more. So I think I have just about everything I need. Uh, and yeah, there we go. So by going through it there and marking the tops of these, you're marking the tops of emerging candles. Emerging candles are candles that have a lot of a buyer volume, a lot of volume that took it that high, um, and also a candle in which took it to a new area. So from the left side, I was grabbing candles in which broke those areas first. So those were the first time they've ever been broken. Price history matters more than anything. So um, let's get into you know why I marked those levels so what you're doing here is forming a trade plan so right there I have all the levels almost all the levels I need to do now so now the next step in this is moving down to the four hour and if you haven't ever seen this system before uh, move over to the playlist of this channel and you'll see that there is a TA routine playlist and you'll see me break it down a lot lot more uh, but I'm just kind of giving you the simples of it right now so to get into the juicy stuff of this uh, longer video really the pattern trading the swing trading all that um, but as you can see the levels are utilized very very well but what I do on the four hours I like to grab trend lines um, so as you can see we have a nice rounding bottom here so nothing to really mark there uh, but what I want to mark now is kind of the top trend line here so as you can see we have a nice kind of trend line there now uh, and that's really all I can mark I don't really want to mark that right there not really anything there uh, and I, this would be a bad line because I'm utilizing current price never utilize current price for trend lines so I'm just gonna leave that top line there and move on so we can move down to the 30 day 30 minute see if we have any levels that we missed uh, looks like we got most of them. We can mark that one. Support. I mean, sorry, resistance turn support. Uh, breakout. Move higher. There. We can mark yesterday's low. This common resistance. We have everything we need now. So, going into the trade plan with Beyond. Now we can say uh, below 149 to the psychological level of 147.50, 148, 146 uh, would be good. Um, with our main level here at 145 so that would be our main target but we do have a couple levels in between at any time on any chart there are always levels of psychology so even when you go to new highs let's say uh, let's go to this so let's say beyond has never been above this which it hasn't um, what would be the next levels I would mark I would mark 240 I would mark 245 I would mark 250 255 260 265 270 so on and so on um, and you can do this at any time between any of your levels, um, any zero and one and five. These are really, really good psychology numbers. Um, and you might think I'm crazy saying that kind of stuff, but it actually is super useful and super helpful. Uh, whenever people break out on the zoom, you know, and they have targets and you're always like, well, it looks like they only call out every dollar per. That's probably what they were doing is every dollar per. Uh, and that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, when people are buying up something and let's say they're buying it up to 500 flat, do you want to be the last person buying past that? Um, you know, sometimes when they blow past psychology targets, they do jump crazy, uh, but sometimes they're also the perfect resistance. So um, it also takes into account where you are on the chart. So 
always look at that kind of stuff. Um, but the big thing I wanted to cover with this little section was the how to how to form a trade plan, how to really how to chart better. Because uh, with all that, that's really all you need. You never have to delete those lines. And if you do ever delete those lines to reset your chart, reset your head, um, you'll end up getting the same levels. You know, you don't have to worry about uh, getting different or jumbling your TA or any of that. You know, so um, big move there. And, you know, as you can see above two, above 155, we're looking above that to this. And, and of course, also a big tip is adding the BB system. You know, what is the BB system? The BB system is where you add the previous day high, which is why you saw me add those. Let's actually change that. So as you can see, I'm marking the previous day low, the previous day high, the pre-market high, and the pre-market low. So this is all of extended hours, but the pre-market actually ended up starting about right here. So that's the pre-market low. That's where you'd be looking for, for puts with a good level here from the bigger time frame and your previous day low. So you have multiple levels to go off of for day trading as well. <clears throat> why this is useful and why I'm teaching you this. So let's say you were in a swing trade from this day into this day. You know, what would be your thinking? Um, so let's say you were in calls. You're really hoping this goes up more. Um, you know, a lot of people see this and it doesn't just completely break out. They don't take profits at open or something happens and they're just still in the trade or, or range trades like this and they don't know what to do. Stick to your plan. What did you set as a stop loss? What did you set as a target? What did you set as your breakouts? You know, you should already have all this prepared before you're in the trade. So... Um, going through the next day, now you have all these levels to give you a little more confidence. So now that I'm looking at this and I was hoping it would go up more, I would know that it just range traded all day and I'm probably still good to hold going off of this during the day. So if I was ever looking to take profits, I definitely could have, um, but didn't move up enough for you to really get a lot more extrinsic value in your premium. Um, but that's the kind of thinking you have to have, you know, utilizing the BB system and the TA routine levels to give you the confidence in what you're holding and what you're trading. So yeah, you probably should have cut it as it made a new low uh, today about right here. You could see the trade did give a little bit of weakness. This, this is all hypothetical. I'm not giving a real trade on this, uh, but just a decent example on that. But these are the levels that it can help you keep in those trades. So if you ever, let's say you're looking for calls, your calls to break out. Now you know if price ever breaks here at 155.17, your calls are going to start paying more. If it ever breaks this level, you probably need to cut it and wait for re-entry or a new level or play puts, okay? Because that knowing that it breaks the pre-market low, it has a very high probability of reaching a previous day low or any psychological level in between. Which look 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 at that. If I mark 150, right after talking about that, look where it ended up holding at the end of the day. So um, very nice to see that. But I hope this is helpful, and I'm going to start breaking into the wee bull trading stuff now. All right, so before I get started on this section, uh, let me just give it some time to throw up some screenshots on the screen. Uh, this is going to be, you know, what the account started at, what it went to, um, what it's at right now. I'll probably show a more updated of what it's at right now. So it's probably down or up a little more. I'm not quite sure. But uh, this account, we started with $226, a very weird number. Uh, it was a couple free stocks I had in the account, and then I deposited $150. Uh, but I'll show all that there. So um, $226, though. Uh, and you can see all my winning and losing trades so far. Uh, but I'm going to go through the first um, three, six, seven, eight trades that actually got me to a thousand. So it only took me eight trades to get to a thousand from 226 with only swing trading. Um, I did take one day trade at the very, very end to make about twenty-one dollars on or thirty-one dollars on Tesla, so I could um, so I could get past that thousand mark with a with a little bit more than a thousand because I think it was like a thousand one when I beat it and then I traded Tesla and it was a little bit more so I had a little bit more than just at a thousand I was at least past a thousand so nine trades if you want to count that uh, day trade but to actually hit a thousand it was only eight um, but now that you've seen all those screenshots uh, I'm gonna go through the trades um, I just kind of have them screenshotted and I'm gonna go through them uh, but come on. No, I don't want to log out. All right, perfect. Here we go. All right, so um, as we're going through this, I'll try and best explain uh, the patterns, how I looked at them, how I traded them, uh, and all, all that good stuff as I went through this stuff. But um, as you can see here, though, TXN was my very first trade. Uh, in the very first three trades, as you can see, um, I can't say I did use good risk reward because or risk management because I did almost 100% the account on each trade for the first three trades at least. So, um, but that was very necessary for me in my opinion. I was very confident in the trades that I was looking at. So let's start off with the first one. So TXN, very strong company that I really really like. You guys hear me talk about them a ton of times. Uh, but as you can see here, 
We got a bullish engulfing, so I ended up buying about the last 20, 30 minutes of the day, and then I ended up selling about a few hours into the next day. So I didn't have to take anything crazy. Uh, and as you can see, I ended up making $80, which is about 38% on that. Uh, on that particular trade, just from about the close of there to a little past open of that day. So just a little bit that that little bit amount can help you big time. Uh, but that was 38% gain, so very nice on the first trade. Uh, let's go into the next one. Uh, beyond, oh wait, my bad. So a big thing too with the TXN2 is, um, I can't really scroll over and show you this right here. Uh, I can go over after and show you, but uh, there was a very, very big uptrend already here. So this line was already here. So finding this big spike uh, and just buyers was really nice for me because I was like, all right, cool. This is a really good first trade. I already really like this company. Uh, so it wasn't just the pattern. It was the position it was in too. Uh, so yeah, you could say, well, it's on a weird downtrend right here. But the main thing I was looking at was the uptrend. Okay, the uptrend that it's in. It's on the bottom of the line. It's on the primary trend line. So that was my big thing with that trade uh, and why I had so much confident, uh, confidence in it. Uh, very next trade. We had a double Horami here. As you can see, we have kind of one right here, and then you have one right here. And then we had another day trade in beside that day. So it really was squeezing. A squeeze is just uh, where your highs and lows are trading within themselves. So eventually, it's going to be a pop to one direction. It can't just keep squeezing. Um, and as you can see, it squeezed to as much as it really could. Um, you could really just see the triangle there. Uh, but end up popping. I ended up getting in at the end of this day. Uh, the very next day was a Friday very weird Friday too. It was like a weird sell-off day, but like nothing moved too crazily, like a, really a bunch of wicks on the daily time frames. Um, but as you can see, it was a dark cloud cover. I was being preemptive. Um, so I marked the 50% of this day and I said, if it goes below it, I cut it. If it stays above it, I stay in it. I hold over the weekend. It held over the 50% of this day, pushed over and I got a really, really nice gap. So yeah, I'm going to take my profits. No one goes broke taking profits. And as you can see, um, the next couple of days gapped and then it started gapping more because of the AMC, GME, Reddit hype stuff, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, but beyond was thrown in there this time around. So as you can see a crazy runner, um, but one contract again, you know, I made 83, almost 84% on that. I'm not going to go crazy with that. I'm going to take my profits and work on the next trade. I'm not going to get crazy or greedy with it. Uh, so let's look at the next trade. So the next trade I took was John Deere, another one of my favorite uh, companies to trade a lot. So as you can see, a very weird trade, not the cleanest of charts. It really was risky, uh, but my big thing was he kind of had this morning star look to it right here uh, with earnings there. And earnings had amazing things come out about it, so I'm already a huge fan of them. This just added on to that. Uh, but as you can see, ended up pushing, so just an overnight swing. But the only reason I was getting into it is because just like on that Beyond chart, you can look at this one. Um, and it ended up kind of starting above it, pushing down, but it held above the 50% of this day. So I kind of have my bullish pattern going, plus the next day was a sell-off, but it didn't sell off past anything crazy. If anything, it's just holding for support to catch. So I know that I have a pretty high probability of one good pop heading my way. Uh, and what did it end up doing? Very next day, after filling the gap that day too, that was a big thing, ended up making a lower high. So I ended up taking profits before it got to 368s again. So I ended up taking profits way prior to that. I was not even close to the top of this wick. Okay, I'm probably like right here on that before it even gets close. To that. I'm taking profits before my target, before the momentum has a chance to slip on me. Okay, so always take profits right before your target. Never never really wait for it to perfectly hit it. Okay, because then, then you're going to get caught up in something you don't want to be caught up in. Uh, but that trade made us about 175, 33%. So that moved the account up very nice too. So just after the first three trades, it really, really boosted my confidence. It boosted my trading um, account really well. So I was able to get more expensive contracts and not risk everything. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. So that's just my thinking on that one. Uh, very next trade, this was a Moustache Bot alert by Jason. Uh, we're the owners of Moustache Bot, but Jason actually alerted this, and we kind of break down a lot of TA together, and I really, really like this one. We were kind of being a little early on it, but we were happy with it. We were being preemptive on it being a higher low. Um, as you could see, there was a low here made after earnings, and then price kind of pushed up, held above the 50% of this red candle. That was another big thing, you know, marking the fib from here to here and then marking them in between. You can actually see the 50% ended up holding, or all these ended up holding above that, so very good for bull momentum, uh, in which I held for one day, two day, sold towards the top of this because um, I didn't like that it was rejecting the bigger trend line on the top, which was the ma main target. You know, I probably could have just sold the day before and made the same amount, but I wanted to see if I could get more. Um, maybe a little bit of greed in that, but the position was very cheap. Uh, VLDR only costed, uh, oh, okay, it was about 185 So it was a little expensive for the account, but 
um, not as big as what I was used to doing. So it was something I was able to risk or want to risk for more. So um, definitely always take your risk reward into account. Okay. Cause if it's a cheaper trade and it's riskier analysis. It's just as good as if you find, um, a more expensive trade that you have to risk more on, uh, with good analysis. So kind of take that into effect as you look at stuff, but, uh, let's look at the next one. Uh, so BNGO, this one really boosted the account. Um, I did some crazy stuff with this, but I was super confident in it. So I'm, I'm a really big genomics person. Uh, I probably just said that wrong after just saying I'm a big genomics person. Um, but as you can see, very nice squeeze in here with the downtrend change possibility. Uh, but as you can see, bullish Harami. Yes, that candle's red. How is it a bullish Harami? It doesn't have to be green to be a bullish Harami. What did I say? I just said it has to trade inside of the previous day and be four times smaller. I would say that's way more, a little bit more than four times smaller. That might even you might even be able to fit five or six of those in that candle, uh, into this candle. So. Very high probability. We end up grabbing January contracts on it, so we could still be holding this right now. Uh, but I bought one there, bought one here after the 50% of this candle was held. As you can see, it pushed up, pushed up, pushed up, and it held above this the entire time. So I grabbed another one at the end of that day. Okay. Next day, uh, sorry, three days later, there's a good common resistance here. So I ended up saying if it goes above that and pushes higher, um, I won't take profits on one of these two. I'll grab another one. I'll grab a third. And then I'll take profits on at least two of them when it pushes up. I ended up taking profits on two of them here and one of them here. And the, it, it overall added up to about 180%. The alert from here to here was about 186%. Uh, so very big move on that if you guys took that with me. Uh, and all these, by the way, were called out in chat. None, not one of these were just hidden from everybody. I called out just about every single one of these plays uh, with a video prior and after, as well as with most of them having charts with them too. So... Um, I'm very big on being clear uh, with my TA, whether it's winning or losing. But uh, let's move on to the next trade, though. As you can see, BNGO made me a very big portion of my gain. And that was just one pattern trade led to very good iron hands. I really just iron hands it putting that. So if you haven't seen that video on my channel, go check it out. It's pretty old. But uh, that's really what I did. Really just kept marking my highs. And I just kept holding till it uh, really didn't look like it was going to hold anymore. And as you can see, the wick right here actually, actually thought it was going to stop there. So that's why we took two out of the three. Uh, contracts off the table. So when it gapped up again, yeah, I'm definitely taking the profits off. So let's check out the next trade. We traded Sun W. This is our other one, the September expiration of a bullish engulfing. After a trend change breakout, we had four days sell off, but very low volume. As you can see, this is kind of average volume right here. Very, very low. And as you can see, it didn't really push lower um, with all of that. And it was a higher low. As you can see, if I was to draw a trend line right here, I'd be able to make a higher low. Um, so that's very bullish. That's good for us. Uh, so very perfect spot to find a bullish engulfing and ended up pushing up three days later, took profits. Uh, and I took that for about, what was that? $40, 22%. So not a crazy amount of movement. Um, and it looks like if I would have held longer, I would have made more. But again, I'm not going to look at this stuff as Captain Hindsight, you know, damn, if you'd have held longer. No, I'm, I'm proud of what I did. And I'm moving on to the new opportunity ahead of me. So uh, let's go into the next trade. John Deere again. Traded John Deere again. People are probably... Surprised how I even got this one. I'm surprised how I got this one. I thought it was going to move up more. Um, but as you can see, I had to hold through another weird Friday. Um, another emotional Friday. I even said it here. So as you can see, another kind of star here, star here. Again, doesn't have to be green. What did I say? It just has to have those gaps. Um, so that kind of gave me my initial entry. The emotional Friday came. We didn't really drop super low. Had relatively low volume. So I was okay with holding over the weekend. I was not lucky enough, I was prepared um, that the next week gave us that doji, that next that next Monday. Um, so it ended up popping up, going to the same target I sold at right here. So I took profits at the same exact spot. I didn't let it go too far before I got greedy. Um, and as you can see, I did the right choice because it's just been coming down ever since uh, and giving us another trade opportunity. So uh, not really a whole lot of deeper thinking on that one, just just a lot of know-how kind of added on together. And as you can see, in all these examples, you've seen my TA routine levels around everything. Uh, but let's go into the, I think this is the last one. Yeah, Ford. Uh, so Ford was a pretty big gain. Uh, we took about 38%, and this pushed us past that limit uh, of 1,000. It was about 1,001 when I took profits on this trade. So from 226 bucks to a, lot, a little over 1,000. Um, so that was pretty awesome. It was a pretty cool feeling. Uh, I wasn't really a big swing trader last year. Um, this year, I just really want to get into it. Uh, and what better way to do it than with price action and pattern trading. So... Uh, very happy to be doing this challenge, and I might do some more in the future. I'm probably still going to be trading with this one just for fun, but uh, we'll see where it goes. Um, but as you can see here on Ford, though, 
kind of already had that push up. Uh, and then we got, we did get kind of lucky. On, you'll never hear me say getting lucky, but um, so there's no ER, you know, there's no earnings here, but a bunch of really big numbers started coming out. So it was really good for Ford. So we were just prepared at the right time. There is no such thing as luck. I take that back. Uh, we were prepared at the right time. Um, but as you can see, price pushed up, ended up coming over here. I really like that we held over the 50% here. That's why that white line's there. It's the 50% of that candle. I like that we held above that, uh, not only on this candle, but on this doji here for indecision. So I was like, you know what? Take the risk reward. It's forward. Ended up pushing up very next day, taking profits. And a lot of my smaller account traders in my chat uh, took profits with me. So very, very happy, very proud of them. Um, it, it really does mean everything to the world to me whenever uh, smaller accounts grow with me because it really is awesome seeing those guys grow uh, but in a humble manner you're not being too greedy with it so uh, I hope this portion was pretty cool I hope it was informative insightful on how I how I take a lot of trades um, let me come on close that um, so what I wanted to do is kind of cover you know, what I was talking about on the beyond uh, trade. Oops. So right here, um, what I was talking about when I was saying uh, it held the 50% control point. So when I took the trade here, right, did the double haram, you got one there, one there, and then you got another one squeeze in between on this kind of rounding look to it. That's really good. You want to see rounding when you're, when you're playing slow bulls because bears are always quick. Bulls are always slow, so you're always going to have that. Um, but the big thing that kind of kept me focused on this when I was in my trade at the end of this day, uh, when I had that next red day, yeah, it was a little disheartening, you know, because no one wants to hold through a red day. Uh, everyone just wants to get green instantly. So let me just mark the 50% of that green day. And as you could see, we didn't even get close to the 50% of that day. So I had really good... Um, really good confidence, a really big confidence in this trade to keep going. So that's a really big thing that I like to do is marking those control points. That's why I say mark the outside of the power pattern, mark the, mark the middle of the pattern. Um, those are three of the most important levels. The only other important levels you need are all of your TA routine and your BB system. You have the, all those three together and you have the greatest mix for levels, preparation, trade plan, um, so let's let's go over stop loss. You know what's my stop loss? My stop loss is the 50% of that candle just based off the fact that this gapped up. Why? Because I'm being preemptive. I would think, okay, that's starting to turn into a dark cloud cover. If it passes this, it's bearish. If it holds over, I should still be good. What did it do? It held over. I was still good. No, you're not always going to get a gap up or a big move. Um, sometimes it'll be very slow. Sometimes you even get a third uh, or a fourth red candle, and then it moves up. Um, it's not always just quick. Um, but I hope this was helpful. I hope kind of going over some of these trades was helpful. And, of course, if you guys want me to break anything down further, um, join the chat, join the streams, let me know what you want. Uh, but hopefully this is helpful. And uh, yeah, uh, one more thing. So when you guys are day trading, right, and you guys are day trading with the BB system, a really big thing that I like to cover with my team is the staircase method. Uh, the staircase method is selling to the first target after breakout for a few months, you know, for a few months, a year. If you need to go longer than that, awesome. Um, but you should focus on playing the breakout. So, you know, playing from your breakout to your to your target. That should be your entire focus for months on end until you get confident with it. And while you're doing that, you will be building not just the knowledge, uh, not just building knowledge of price action and all that, but you also be building your confidence to hold trades longer. While doing that, and this is why it's called the staircase method, is after those few months of doing that for the first target, you'll start buying more than one. Okay, so let's say you end up having a target right here, right? Whoa. Let's so say you have a target right here, right? So you have two contracts. Uh, what do you do? Do you sell all of them right here? Do you sell none of them? Do you just keep being greedy? No, you scale out. You sell one on that on that target, and you sell second on that on that target. Therefore, you're not making just forty five percent. Now you're making a little more than that, and you're lowering your risk. You're paying for your trade while the, while it's still paying you. Okay, so you're lowering. You want to be lowering your risk as you exit your trade. So kind of have that mindset through any kind of day trading and swing trading, but. Uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful, and I'm going to get into the last couple sections of this, and then I hope you guys enjoy this. So, yeah. All right, so I'm going to get into the last couple topics I wanted to kind of finish off in this video, um, which are going to be this, which is the volume bowl concept. Just a little, small little video, which I some of you may be aware from the streams. Um, also, the uh, trade log, I want to cover that, and then also using larger time frame and smaller time frame to kind of break down more trades. So... <clears throat> Volume bowl concept. So think of 
think of this as a bowl down here, okay? And all the green is uh, green gummy bears, and the red is a bunch of red gummy bears, okay? So you're, you're just throwing a bunch in a bowl. So you have a big spike, okay? So you have a bunch of green gummy bears in there right now. Then you have a little bit of red, a little bit of green, a little more red, a little more green. Uh, but overall, you should be able to see you do have a little more green than you do red as you're breaking above this. So now you're, you know, you're a little more bullish. Um, but... The big thing when you're looking at volume as it's rising and price is rising is noticing the sizes and the candles and also the volume. So no, these are not always going to be the same size. Um, they're not always going to be perfect like that. But if you have a pretty big candle down here, you should have a pretty big candle up here. And if you don't, then there's something off. Okay, so the bigger significance when you're looking through some of your pattern trades is going to be when you see those spikes in volume. So whenever you have this big downtrend and then a big spike, now you see there's some interest here. So you're going to want to mark the half of that. You're going to want to mark the outside of that. You're going to want to mark everything around that. Just like I covered with the TA routine, the BB system, all the pattern trading stuff. Um, but you're going to want to mark all that. Um, so the big thing here with Cron is uh, we end up calling this out, by the way, just so everyone knows. Um, kind of end of day here, held through this day, uh, and then ended up pushing up again here. So a big thing, too, that was kind of cool was that a concept I wanted to break down was that volume bowl one. But two, uh, the kind of control point that it held, you know, so you see how it kind of pushed up here and then the very next day started above it and pushed down. It never even got close to closing above the 883. You know, it closed above it up here, um, but the wick actually gave us good, strong momentum. So good, awesome indication there. So using your daily time frame and all your analysis knowledge now that you have um, through, through the course of this video, all the other videos, the trading course, you know, whatever you learn through. Um, but now you're able to break it down on the smaller time frame. So let's go down to that. So knowing that that level needs to be broken above, you know, how could you have, how could you have taken this trade uh, end of day the other day, you know, so holding above the midpoint, you could have entered any point after it re broke back above 883. So you could have entered there end of day or taken the next day day trade at open as it broke above the nine or that that uh, not previous day, but the pre previous day um, high right there at 908. So nine to 910, you know, you could have kind of taken another call play. Okay, now let's break it down further. Look where those levels ended up being utilized. You could see the pre market held that midpoint, the bullish momentum pushed through those two levels, held for more bullish momentum, came back down to test as true support. And now you see prices currently still sitting there. So still utilizing this range of support, even though it's only been a couple of days of price action. So as you can see, very, very crucial to utilize. And another one I kind of wanted to cover was Netflix. So today on Netflix, uh, I called out puts. Uh, we took it from about 488.50 right here down to the last 10 minutes of the day. So quick day trade if anybody wanted to take it with us. Um, we ended up holding for the swing trade because of the bigger time frame. Um, but the big thing here was using all of our time frames together. So not only did we use the levels and all the good preparation, but I ended up breaking it down the four hour. I got the meat of the bone here and I got the good bottom trend line and a good top trend line. So as soon as it was able to push under, I can take that trade. Okay. So I can get into it knowing that if it, if it ends up pulling up and closes above back up here, I'm out of that trade. I'm not holding it any longer. Okay. So once it broke down 488 fifties, we're able to get into that trade. Um, with with confidence, you know, not just randomly entering. So, utilizing your bigger time frames, your daily and your four hour, to help you on the smaller time frames. So, as you could see, you know, you don't see this as a good common support on those time frames. Uh, when you get down to this, you could see, okay, wow, you know, once that broke, it really was just home free uh, for the sellers. But look where your vol volume ended up picking up at. You know, so you could see sellers started coming in really heavy end of day. So this might have been a really really good hold for overnight. We'll see going into tomorrow, but or I guess today for you all, but uh. Yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Um, oh, one last thing. So the trade log. Um, you guys kind of saw how I was like floating this around. <clears throat> if you want access to how to do one of these or um, whatever you need to do to get one of these, you know, hit me up. Let me know. Um, but at least write them down. If you don't know how to do one of these, at least write them down so you can at least remember, um, you know, what trades you're in what trades you took, what losses you've taken, the size of the losses and wins that you've taken. It, Cause it, it really, it really is 100% preparation uh, when it is coming around all this stuff. So definitely work on that, work on organizing yourself as you go through all of your trades, work on, you know, coming back through this video if you want to, um, if it helps you check out my trading course, if it helps you go check out the YouTube channel, not just this one, but the one in the channel section of this channel, the moose dash trading uh, channel, uh, a lot of swing analysis posted there too. So if you want to check that out, 
Uh, definitely go give that a look right now. Um, but please leave a like and comment on this video. I tried my best to work in a lot of the, my favorite topics that I'm getting a lot of questions about. Um, but again, um, being repetitive with it, you know, uh, every single day we're doing the same thing, uh, but it's a different chart, different situation. You know, we're playing the same thing, but it really isn't the same thing every day. Um, but really hope this video was helpful. Please leave a like and comment, and I will see you guys on the next one.